Hi, I'm Debbie. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these beautiful black dichroic pendants. The beauty of this is that the dichroic is sitting inside and it looks like it's been embedded in the black. It has quite a three-dimensional look to it and looks quite perfect. A lot of people think that we just make them very simply by putting some black glass down and some dichroic and maybe a capping on the top and there it's done. But actually there's a little bit more to it than that. This is a two-step process where we need to get the, the shape of our black piece first and then in order to keep our dichroic looking so perfect and pristine we then put that on top of the black piece once it is cooled down and is um, is ready is the right shape so we are going to show you how to make that today it's similar to this one so we start off in the glass that we have we have some standard black I've got a five centimeter piece here and I have a clear thin a thin clear five centimeter piece now you could use standard clear but I actually find that this results in a far more successful piece when I use the thin. And I have a piece here of dichroic glass um, which is dichroic on clear and it, it, on its own doesn't really look like um, an awful lot but if I pop this against the black for you you can see that it is going to take on some nice blue and green shades and it's going to look rather spectacular. So what we're going to do from this is just cut a wee piece out of it um, where it's got quite a nice design here on the end, that's why I chose this particular piece and we're then going to mount that on our black. But first things first, we need to do stage one of our firing and that is to create our black, our actual black shape that you see there and then cool that. So it's going to it's going to take a wee while to do this obviously. So the first thing to do is to cut our black. We pop on our glasses, take our ruler, and I'm going to cut this black in half. So we can use half for another project. Pop our ruler across there, nice tidy score line through the middle there, take our metal running pliers that through the middle and a gentle squeeze and it's broken in two. So we'll pop that, no actually we won't put that aside for another piece, what I'm going to do is layer both of those together so that we've got a nice six millimeter piece to work with. Otherwise what could happen when we fully fuse it, being that this is just three millimeters, it will want to shrink into the middle and we don't want that to happen, it's not, a, not the shape that I desire for this project. So we're going to put those two together and I'm going to actually make this a little bit shorter, I don't want such a long necklace today, plus if I make it a bit shorter it will then fit inside our fusing paper which is the same size as that piece of glass. So let's just put them, lay them down there side by side, I could have actually done this when I first did my scoring line but I wasn't thinking that's what happens sometimes okay so pop those there nice score line through through there pick up the first one clip and clip okay so we can use those for another project so pop those on there pop it onto our fusing paper Take those off and we can now go across to our kiln and fire them. But I have already done that for you just to save some time today. So we'll put that aside and the one that I've already fired is right here. So let's have a look. So um, lovely shape going on there. That's exactly what I want. So we bring our kiln base. Actually I'll steal that one there. Take those off. Now we have a choice here with this, that we can simply put it down on our new fusing paper on our kiln base 
as it was before and we put our glass on top of that. Now just bear in mind that we're going to be putting a piece of this on and then a piece of this on and we're going to turn it into a bit of a seesaw. So it's actually easier to turn it over. Okay. Now you might be thinking, well, well hang on a minute, I actually really like that shiny side to be at the front of my pendant, but don't worry, this will turn into a shiny side and the bottom piece will simply take on the impression from that fusing paper and the kiln below it. So we'll pop it upside down and that now gives us a, a flat surface to work with. So we'll pop that aside and now our dichroic glass here. I want to make sure for this project that our dichroic is dichroic side down. That way we can actually push our dichroic surface further into the glass which gives a much better and more dramatic three-dimensional effect. Just move away those pieces of glass. So I'll keep that down there. Now uh, just reminding myself I wanted to cut off that end there. Always hold it against black so that you can see what you need to do. So on with my glasses again, out with the ruler and I'm simply going to cut a, oh, a finger width size there so we cut that from there it's going to be a nice little design pop that away for something else and we pop that right into the middle of our piece and we'll make sure that it does definitely stay perfectly in the middle now the next thing we need to do is create our capping. Now one of the keys to this particular piece is having this capping cut perfectly to size. You, won't, you don't want it to be more than the black, you don't want it to go over the edge, and you don't want it to be less than that piece of dichroic. So we need to make it just a little bit bigger than that piece of dichroic that we cut out. So using a bit of guesswork here. I will cut a strip from here that I think is about the, the right width and then we'll work out the length of it. So that width there it doesn't it doesn't hang over the sides of the black and it will definitely cover that dichroic. The reason why we want to cover the dichroic is because if you don't cover it, what will happen is that your dichroic coating from underneath will bleed out. And that in itself can create a really nice effect, but for this particular project, I don't want that to happen. I want it to be absolutely perfect. So. Now getting the length right, we'll cut this a little bit smaller than we cut our black pieces. Not too much, just a little. Hopefully I guessed that correctly. So if I pop that on there now, hmm, I probably not quite cut enough off there because I can see it just hanging over the black on the corners. So I'm going to take that off now and cut a little bit more off the length of that. Just that little wee piece there on the edge, take that off. Place that back on there and that is perfect. I will need to line it up a little bit again when I get to the kiln because it will move around slightly. But before I put it in to fire it, I need to make sure that it is sitting absolutely straight and perfect on there. So, we're about to fire it. We'll start off with, we'll, we'll actually change this one around. Because our black piece has already been fired before, I'm not going to do our normal standard two minutes on high. I'm going to lower the temperature just because a pre-fired piece does tend to be a little bit susceptible to heating that sudden heat. So 
we're going to turn it down to 50% power and I'm going to pop this in for three minutes. So here we are at the kiln and we're going to very carefully, we've got an absolutely perfect positioning going on there so we don't want to bump that at all. It's nice and straight. Put in the middle of the kiln and then we'll pop a lid on it very carefully without disturbing anything. And close the microwave and we're going to go for three minutes at 50% power this time. Okay, so that's been three minutes on 50%. It's all still in one piece, and uh, that's a really good thing. We're going to close the door, and now we're going to go for one minute on high. All right, I can see a little bit of a glow coming from here, so it's heating up. Oh yes, our capping is starting to slump down, and our glass is starting, starting to take on a a orange shade. So we'll just go for 30 seconds now. All right, let's have a little look. Oh, perfect. Looks great. Okay, so getting a good grip on that. Top and bottom, both hands, bring it out. Oh, that looks stunning. Very, very nice. So here we are back again with a nice cold kiln and we're going to open it and see. Whoa, nice. Oh, that's lovely. Gorgeous shape and lovely, lovely colours. So yeah, that is quite amazing. Um, our glasses will cool down now too so I can touch that. It's gone a, a little bit sort of strange here. Perhaps I didn't quite cut that clear quite long enough. A little bit short and it seems to have shrunk um, up towards the dichroic piece there. We also seem to have a little bit of splitting of our dichroic there which indicates to me that maybe we overfired it just a weeny bit but not too bad at all. And there is our pendant. That's really lovely. Great success today. So thanks for watching and you can watch more of our videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe for regular updates.